come here. I'm not letting you out of my sight. Tonight on so Missing much. Persons so Unit, a mother's nightmare. 14 year old Down Latoya here, goes missing lawyers. for the fourth time. The police out again, and again this morning. The cruel irony of Colin's lifelong search for his father. If you're watching this, Dad, um, I, I would like you to meet my wife and children. And the investigation into Bill Roach takes a sinister twist. Is he lost or was he murdered? And does this woman hold the key to the mystery? <laughs> It's 8am at the Missing Persons Unit and the day's new cases have begun rolling in. All right, we've got around about 30 um, outstanding files this morning. Some of the dozens who've gone missing in the past 24 hours Diana, will be in imminent danger if they're not found quickly. You've got a 13-year-old male who uh, didn't return home from school. And there are none afternoon. at greater risk than missing teenagers. Darren, you've got a 14-year-old uh, female reported by a mother. Senior Last Constable evening, Darren Connabeer is handed a case of one runaway teenager who's ago. well known at the morning muster. And for Sergeant yeah. Mark Samways, there's a lead in the case of Bill Roach, missing for 12 long years. We've been requested to assist with a long-term missing persons investigation up at Armadale. Mark will leave for Armadale in a matter of hours. OK, leave it with you. It's the New South Wales Police Missing Persons Unit. Yes. Is she available? Yeah, hold on a second. Thank you. Fourteen-year-old Latoya is one of 100 teenagers reported missing every week. She's run away on uh, at least three other occasions now in the last sort of two months. Latoya's mum, Yasmin, a single mother of three, has been up all night waiting for her daughter to come home. She just heard that Latoya may have turned up Hi, at school Yasmin, is it? this morning. Yes. Hi, I'm Darren Connabeer from the Missing Person Unit. Yeah. This is my partner, Gary Melchore. Hey, how are you going? How are you going? Good. So, we have confirmed that Latoya's at school. Yeah, I just got a call from the school saying yeah. that she was late, but they don't know whether she's at school at the moment, so... Oh, OK. Why wouldn't they know whether she's at school oh, at the moment? Because I obviously haven't checked to see if she's in class. Oh, OK. So, yeah. So, but oh. they know she signed on this morning or something, or roll yeah, call. Yeah, and... yeah. All right. No worry, so we'll head over to the school and yep. see if she's there then. How's okay. that sound? Yep, cool. Okay, no I'll all right. Close my house up. Not a problem, thanks. Mark Samways and Sergeant Steve Jeffries are on their way to Armadale to reinvestigate the disappearance of Bill Roach. Samways is his name, to go to Armadale. Bill was last seen in 1993, aged 25, and he's assumed by many to be still hiding from his family and friends. Bill was heading towards an alternative lifestyle. He'd been experimenting with drugs and just kind of wanted to drop out of normal society. On the surface, I think Bill's appearance and demeanour led people to believe that Bill's just wandered off, maybe even left the state and just gone set a new life up. Thankfully, new information has been received and now uh, we're viewing it as probably uh, something more serious. And all I could think about is the police ringing me up saying, look, we've got your daughter, she's at hospital, she's been raped, or mm, mm. we found that she's got drugs on her, or she's breaking and enter, or she's doing something. And this is Exactly, yeah. and honestly, it's a matter of luck. She only has to be in the wrong place at the wrong time, and that's exactly what's going to happen yeah. to her. It's right lane, mate. Right. Yeah, straight down. She said it's her hormones, something going on in her head, and peer pressure. Well, maybe this might be something that sort of brings her to attention, maybe. Mum is going absolutely spare, and I can understand why, because it's very, very frustrating when you're trying to do the best by your, your child and they just don't want to listen. While Yasmin waits for news of daughter Latoya, in Armadale, the missing persons unit joined with a local task force to search for Bill Roach. The K-9 
cases never really close and even though on the surface they appear to be simple, um, who knows what twists around the corner. Bill's parents and sister Kim have just learnt that police have uncovered disturbing evidence and witness accounts concerning Bill. We believe now, uh, as a result of our investigations, that uh, he has died as a result of foul play. Did you ever think that perhaps Bill was murdered? Well, they're, they're, type, they're the type of things that go through your head, but we always hoped that one day that he'd walk in the door. If we could have closure and then we can get on with the rest of our lives. And... Otherwise, you're still hoping for that knock on the door or the phone call. Darren Connerby is my name. I'm from the Missing Persons of New South Wales Police. Do you want to have a seat? I'm not here to pinch you for anything. I'm not here to try and pinch you or, you know, lock you up or arrest you or get you in trouble. So with you running away, you say it's just to go off and have a good time with your friends? Yeah. Yeah. Do you ever let Mum know at least that you're going somewhere? No. Is on the news there's stories about some child either getting bashed murdered or raped. Now, you're 14, aren't you? To me, you look older than 14. You look like you could be 16 or 17. So if some idiot out there on the street thinks you're 16 or 17, he's not gonna think twice about what he might do to you. I can see that you're obviously a bright girl, you're obviously a talented girl. So let's not waste it. I don't want you to tell me that you're gonna turn around and become this model person. I just want you to tell me that you're at least gonna sit down and think about some of the effects like I said, the effect you have on mum, the possible danger you're putting yourself in, and the effect that you're having on your younger brothers. So what do you think? What are you going to do? Think about it. OK? Yeah. OK. Look after yourself, all right? I want to see your smiling face in years to come. She's saying she's having fun and everything, but you're sitting in the park and... Or you could be sitting at home watching movies, eating popcorn and having fun and camping out and stuff at the backyard and... They don't know it yet, but police will see Latoya's smiling face again sooner than they think. Bill went missing 12 years ago now, and we are searching for his remains. Um, and we're also searching for any property that may have belonged to him, or really anything, um, that could tie Bill into um, the story we've got that he actually may have died in or around that area. At the so time Bill was reported missing, there wasn't a lot done. Um, it could have been the case that because of his state of mind, he um, uh, decided to take his own life. Um, but there are a lot of unanswered questions for the family. Um, and, you know, the police investigation at the time um, was, um, was basic, to say the least. I can see now it is happening. Um, and I appreciate the fact that all these people are out there looking for him. And uh, I just hope that anyone listening that that new bill, if they're just the slightest little bit of information or just be, might be the piece to the jigsaw. It's what, 11, 12 years now and it's, it's just never gets any easier, let me tell you. Back at the missing persons unit, Constable Pat McEwen receives an anonymous tip off, a lead in his search for missing father, Albert Locke. He's an 88-year-old man who um, went missing. Numerous uh, inquiries have been, been made uh, through government instrumentalities and other uh, other areas to try to locate Mr. Locke. Um, his son Colin um, has has not sighted him for many years, I believe, in the vicinity of uh, 25 to 30 years. So constables Rolf and McEwen set off to check out a reported sighting of Albert. Meanwhile, at Holroyd Police Station, there are now grave concerns for Latoya. How long after she was located yesterday that she got missing there? Uh, Last night, hours. only a few hours after police spoke with her at school, Latoya and her girlfriend disappeared missing again. Located, missing on the 13th. They've been out all night and haven't turned up for class. Missing on the 18th and located on the 19th of October. Have we got any concerns for her welfare at this stage? Oh, definitely. They've obviously jumped out the window and gone somewhere.
Hello? Yeah, hi, Yasmin. Darren Connor here from the Missing Persons Unit. How are you? Uh, could be better, but yeah, yep. Any word from Latoya? Um, I haven't heard anything about Latoya, but I've gotten a call from um, police. I've called the school three times today and they didn't turn up at school. I'm just wondering how many more times she's got to do it until something like really, really serious, like I'm like talking about like, she, sh I don't know, it's like a court order or something. You can't sort of hog tie them and hold them down or anything. Um, sometimes it's just the child themselves. They've got to actually see the light of day. We can't be there 24 hours a day to give them that guidance. So you've got to rely on the parents as well to reinforce it. Everything. I've tried everything. Nothing's working. I've even had her in counselling once before. So That's why I think it's time for me to get tough, like really tough. The new information on Albert Locke has led officers to this nursing home in Sydney. We're currently looking for an old chap that we believe may actually reside here. Mm -hmm. his, uh, his name's Albert Locke, uh, possibly known as Bert. Right, we do have a gentleman with that name here. He's been here for some time. Has he? Mm -hmm. In fact, Albert has been living here just a few suburbs away from his son Colin and grandchildren for the past three years. Yeah, that was a good result. Um, he uh, does turn out to be the person who was reported missing. Morning, missing persons, Jennifer Pat McKeon speaking. Oh, hello, Colin. How are you? Um, Colin, we, um, uh, we've located your father. I was just wondering if we, uh, we could uh, come and see you about it. You're at home today, Colin, eh? Okay, look, I'll, I'll give you a ring back uh, shortly. Okay, thank you. Bye. Um, you've done the rolls? Not in. Okay. All right, thank you. Bye. Not in. So now I don't know what to bloody do now. Colin's moment of truth has arrived. It's a moment he's waited a lifetime for. This box is the closest connection Colin has had with his dad in 35 years. No photos, just scraps and clippings of a man he last saw as a seven-year-old boy. He took us out on a day trip, and then uh, there's the pictures, Luna Park, that sort of thing. And then uh, something happened, and then that's the last I've seen him. Ah. Colin, is it? Yes, Pat. Oh. Anyway, it's Pat McEwan. Yeah, Colin, well, it doesn't mention on the phone. We, um, we've located your father. He's living in the eastern suburbs. Um, unfortunately, he doesn't wish for any family members to know his location. I uh, don't know how you feel about that, but... Uh. Oh, that's, that's why I'm all going to find him, so, so I, yeah. I can uh, well, have closure, and so. Oh, look, I, I can understand that. Yeah. I, I wish we had di different news for you. As you say, you want, um, as you say, closure, and uh, no doubt you, um, your kids would probably want to know who their grandfather was too, I guess. Yeah, they yeah. I, I've sort of told him a, a bit of background about him. He was 30 when I was born and 37 when, when we last saw each other. And he may have had um, family uh, was that? Yeah, yeah, after that. since then. Yeah. Yeah, Unfortunately, we've just got to adhere by what uh, that, that, that your dad's told us. Yeah. I'll certainly let him know that you, you're the one that's interested. Okay. And we'll just hope it changes. Yeah. Okay. Okay, yeah, thanks. All right, well, uh, we'll keep going then. All the best. Okay, thanks, Pat. Okay. He is a nice fellow, and uh, we just hope we can, we can maybe pass this on to the uh, his dad and see if he'll he may relent and uh, decide to to meet with him. So we just hope that that happens. If you're watching this, Dad, um, I I would like you to meet my wife and children and your your grandchildren.
you know, like I told um, Senior Constable Will Kewan, I've got no malice towards you for, for what happened. I just want, want to see you before, before it's too late. After Bill Roach disappeared, SES volunteers, local police and divers converge on Springwood, his last home. Now Bill's family have to confront that his home may also be his grave. I don't think it really hit yet. It's, I think it's about to start to hit. You know, you, you feel that he's probably gone, but you know, certainly hope that he's going to turn up. You expect it one day. Yeah, you never lose no. that hope. No, you never lose that hope. Never lose no. that hope. When you talk with Yvonne and the rest of the family, you can um, almost see the pain on their face. Um, they don't know what happened to Bill. They haven't seen him since late 1993. When I talk to Yvonne, she's always talking about Bill walking through the door, and she's, she's told me numerous times she goes up to people in the street thinking it's yeah. Bill. This is a place Bill um, used to come, probably a place he talked about. It's also the place that police suspect Bill's body was disposed of, a haunting image for his mother, Yvonne. So, what do you reckon? Thrown over or? Huh? Pushed over, thrown over or? Well, I don't know. <laughs> we don't know. We'll see, see what we can find in that first place. There's been a whole lot of scenarios going through and do the sort of things that you've got to live with and keep you awake of a night. Did they suffer? Did they? Was it quick and easy? Or, you know, and how and why? And, you know, it's just, you just go on and on and on. As the day wears on, Yasmin's concern for her daughter, Latoya, skyrockets. The talk amongst her friends is that she's been squatting in a derelict shack nearby. Here's the park just here. Excuse me, can you guys tell me if there's an old shack around here where these kids like this supposed to be a hangout joint? Just go straight down there. Yeah. It'll be ice arena. There'll be a little house across it. Oh, OK then. All right, All right thanks. Mate, she's uh, 14 years old. She's roughly about 170 centimetres tall. She's yeah. a thin build and got yep. a lot of acne around her face, lower face. Yep. Yasmin finds the house she believes Latoya has been sleeping in. Needles They're everywhere. I'm worried about whether she's taken drugs, having sex. Yasmin's been worried about Latoya before. Watch needles and everything. But never like this. Latoya! Latoya, are you in there? Latoya! It's a parent's worst nightmare. The information we've been given that possibly Bill met the foul play and Bill was thrown in the waterhole. Ideally, we'd like to find a set of human remains. And if the bones are intact and they say, for instance, a jawbone, we may be able to backtrack and find uh, a dentist that Bill had been to and find dental work. And then we have the uh, forensic dentists who will compare the dental charts and they can give uh, specialist evidence that that, that jawbone belongs to the, the missing person's dental records. So there's all avenues we have to explore. No. Hello, Mark. How are you going? Mark, missing how are you? person's unit too. I work Thank with you. Steve. Yeah. It's relieving that it is happening, but um, it's very frustrating and a bit of uh, emotion would be anger that it should have been done a lot sooner than this. We did a whole lot of things, going to the police and they're not having enough evidence and this and that and people not really listening to what we're trying to say. In this case all along mum's asserted that it's out of character for her son just to disappear off the face of the earth and hopefully mum will be proved right. May all be 12 years later but hopefully we can say to mum well yes your hunch was right and we'll get some resolution for, for the mother. Twenty-four hours after she went missing, the toyer and her friend breeze in through the front door. Where have you been? 
Blacktown Station. All day at Blacktown Station? No, not all day. Where have you been? At school. Not you... at school, but... You went to school today, did you? Yeah. No, you didn't. We did. You know you didn't because I called the school three times today. And you didn't leave at 5.36 o'clock this morning. You stomped out the window last night. Didn't you? Didn't you? Yes. So what are you lying to me for? You know how much I feel like just grabbing you at the moment and shaking the shit out of you? You know what? You two are finished. You're not hanging around each other anymore. Do you understand me? Yes. You go that way. You sit down there and you wait for the police to come and pick you up. What? I, don't, I want my clothes back. Latoya, you're on deep shit. I've had the police and everybody looking out for you today. Where, where'd you go last night? No, but we just walked around. Where? Over in Blacktown. That's it. This is stopping today. Right, do you know how many police officers have been out looking for you two girls? What was going through your head when the copper was talking to you, Latoya? Two silly runaway girls think they want to run away and have some bull crap fun. Doing what? Come here. You're, I'm not letting you out of my sight. Have you been doing drugs or anything? No. I feel like just so much slapping you right in the mouth right now for just treating me like shit yesterday. Lying to me last night, saying you weren't going to go anywhere. Go in a room and check on you, you're gone. I had to leave the three kids in the house, going down the park here looking for you. The police out again, and again this morning. And all day looking for you at Quakers Hill, Blacktown, wherever they could think, everywhere that they could possibly think that you were, they were out looking for you. As police and volunteers prepare for one last sweep of the waterhole and surrounding bush, forensic detectives focus on the farm. The mystery of what happened to Bill Roach may be found in the floorboards of this old cottage. Right, today we're looking for um, uh, evidence that, uh, of foul play, basically. We've been tasked to discover evidence of perhaps body fluids or blood. We removed uh, a certain amount of carpet and applied a number of chemical treatments. Uh, we got a couple of positive indications that there was um, some body fluids in the residence. If remains are found, um, then obviously the process of DNA testing has to take place to establish that it is in fact the missing person. And uh, we have to make sure that the, a DNA sample is taken from a blood, rel blood maternal relative to compare the DNA. On a trail full of twists, Sergeant Samways discovers information that may be devastating to the Roach case. He learns that Bill was adopted. Yvonne is not his biological mother. There may be nothing to match the DNA and forensic material found in the cottage. When the police officers went to the school yesterday, what were you saying in your head like, F you, go and get stuffed? The police are here right now. Would you like to talk to them? All right, Victoria, yeah. do you feel like talking to us and saying where you were? Well, what you've got to stop doing... I got stuck. ...is they're running away, mate. I know they're running away. You're worrying too many people. Do you who cares? Who's the else? This is the one that you like. We're running around looking for you. Mum's running around looking for you. The other family's running around looking for you. Takes a phone call. Yeah, and they're the ones that are running away. Yeah, but they're running away from the police officers. Yeah, but they're running away from the police officers. Yeah, but they're running away from the police officers. You're staying in tonight, yeah? No more. Okay. Oh, I need to feel like a beer now. <laughs> I think it's just going in one ear and out the other. It's her just saying, stuff you, I'm still not going to listen to you. She might surprise me. She might, she might be listening, but I, I really don't think she is. She hasn't listened all the other times. True to his word, Pat McEwen makes one last attempt to arrange a meeting between Colin Locke and his dad. I indicated to Colin that if he um, if he could write to his dad, I'd uh, I'd make sure he was delivered to him. And in fact, we uh, we did that. Uh, Colin wrote a letter, and I've, I've taken it out to the nursing home. Unfortunately, again, um, Mr. Locke just uh, he didn't want to read it. He, indicate he may do so in the future, but uh, at this stage, um, he won't read it. Next week, the search.
search is on for Bill Roach's natural mother. Hello, Margaret. Sergeant Mark Samways from the Police Missing Persons Unit. Pleased to meet you. Thank you. Shocking news. You had a child in 1968? Yes. And a painful past to confront. That's what this is in relation to. I have as much time as you need, okay? (laughs) And the call (laughs) Wendy thought would never come. But in a moment, a mother's joy... He's gone. ...turns to heartbreak. Hello? Lost it again. 